Dips are an important part of Middle Eastern cuisine, and one dip that does not get enough attention is Mahamara. This Syrian dip takes full advantage of the complex flavours you can get by roasting red peppers and toasting walnuts. Once they're combined with pomegranate molasses and a few spices, the result is a spectacular tasting dip that is sweet, sour and umami all at the same time. Hey everyone, I'm Obi, a home cook who wants to get you cooking authentic and delicious Middle Eastern food at home. Now this week's recipe is so much more than some of its parts, and the end result is amazing considering how little effort it requires. It's the perfect dip to serve as part of a mezza spread, or as a snack with some toasted bread. With that said, let's jump right in and make it. First thing we'll do is prepare our peppers, as they need to be charred then fully cooled before we can use them. This dish originated in a city called Aleppo in Syria, which is where Aleppo peppers come from, so it makes sense to use them here, but they are impossible to find. Instead, the closest thing you'll probably get to them is fresh paprika peppers, which are similar in flavour, but less spicy. If you can't find those, then regular red bell peppers will work too. For the recipe, you'll need 250 grams or half a pound of cooked red pepper, which is about four to five peppers before you cook it. But I recommend making a bit more as the peppers are a great sandwich filler. To prepare the peppers, start by giving them a good wash. Then using a knife, remove the stalk from each one. They'll need to be cooked until they have charred and softened, which if you have a barbecue or gas burner, is done by placing them directly on the flame. But I'll be doing it using the broiler in my oven instead. To do this, line a baking sheet with foil, then place a wire rack on top of it. Place your prepared peppers on top of the rack and leave a small amount of space around them. Once they're all on there, I sliced an onion into quarters and added it to the tray as well. We'll char this too for added flavour in the final dish. Turn your broiler or grill onto medium, and then place the tray below it. The peppers then need to stay under the grill for about 8 minutes until they have cooked and burnt on the top surface. Once mine had, I pulled the tray out and rotated them all. Then they went back in for another 8 minutes. Repeat this until you have charred each side of the peppers and they are cooked through. When I pulled mine out, here's what they looked like. They've all softened and wilted and they have a bit of charring on each piece. While they're still hot, transfer them all into a large bowl as well as your onion and pile them all up on top of each other. Then cover the bowl with some tight fitting plastic wrap. This will trap any residual heat and steam in the bowl, which will soften the skins and make it easier to peel them off. Set the bowl aside for 15 minutes while the steam does its magic. 15 minutes later, the peppers are ready to be peeled. Just pinch the skin and pull. If you've charred the peppers enough, the skin will come off in a few big pieces. Rotate the pepper and make sure to strip the skin from the whole thing. Then when you're done, rip off the top of the pepper and remove the core and any seeds from within it. This can get quite annoying if your peppers are full of seeds like mine, but don't be tempted to wash the seeds out with water, as you'll just be washing away all of the charred flavour. When you're done, you should be left with a pile of pure red pepper flesh that looks like this. It's fine if a few seeds are left in, but you should aim to clean it as much as possible. Weigh out 250 grams or half a pound, as well as half of the onion, and set it aside until later. Now the other major component of this dish is walnuts, and I find that toasting them for a few minutes really improves their flavour. To do that I've got a pan on medium heat, which I'll add 60 grams or 2 ounces of walnuts to. Once in there they need to be stirred and moved every few seconds for 5 minutes. We're not aiming to brown them, so you'll have to go off of smell, and when you can smell a toasty walnutty aroma, remove them from the pan immediately and set them aside. For the recipe, we'll also be using 60 grams or 2 ounces of fine breadcrumbs, which we'll toast in the same pan. Just toss them in and stir them for around 5 minutes, until they go from a pale beige to a few shades darker. When done, they'll have a toasty flavour which will taste a lot better in the Mahamara. With all that done, we can finally make the dip. And I'm using a food processor, but a blender will work fine too. Add in your 60 grams of toasted walnuts and then your 60 grams of toasted breadcrumbs. You'll also need to add the weighed red pepper and onion to the bowl. Apart from that, we're also adding 4 tablespoons of olive oil, 4 tablespoons of pomegranate molasses, and 1 tablespoon of tahini. To season it, add in 1 teaspoon of Aleppo pepper flakes or other chili flakes, 3 quarters of a teaspoon of ground cumin, and finally 1 teaspoon of salt. All that's left to do now is place the lid on your food processor and blend everything together. It should only take about a minute or two for your dip to form. During this time, make sure to open the food processor and scrape down the sides of the bowl a couple of times. Here's what mine looked like after 2 minutes of processing. 
It's a uniform orange colour and resembles a red pesto, which you can kind of think of this as the Middle Eastern version of. If you'd like yours more finely ground, then just leave your food processor or blender running for a while longer, and it will keep getting smoother and smoother. So I've doubled my recipe because I want to try out the Lebanese variant, which is just like the Syrian one, but with a couple of extra ingredients. For this I added in half a teaspoon of sumac and two tablespoons of tomato paste, though I have also seen lemon juice and garlic being added. I gave it a quick mix to combine them into the dip, and this is what I was left with. Now all that's left to do is plate and serve. I've chosen to plate my muhammara in a deep bowl, where I've piled it up in the centre. Then I used a spoon to work the dip into a well shape. To do that, rotate the bowl with one hand while pushing the muhammara with the back of your spoon. When you get your desired shape, rotate the bowl the other way to smooth the edges out. Then all that's left to do is drizzle on some olive oil or pomegranate molasses and garnish it with chopped walnuts and Aleppo pepper. Finally, add in a sprig of mint and your muhammara is done. All right, I've got some Lebanese bread and the muhammara here. So now it's time for the all important taste test. Let's see how this turned out. You might be surprised to hear that I actually have a walnut allergy and in about half an hour, my tongue will swell to twice its size. Despite that, this is so worth eating. The flavor of the freshly roasted peppers really shines and the pomegranate molasses gives the muhammara a sweet and tangy kick. There's just the slightest amount of heat coming from the Aleppo pepper, but if you're like me and you prefer spicy things, then I'd recommend doubling it. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like, share or subscribe as it really helps the channel. As usual, all the ingredient amounts and directions are in the description box below, and I'll be back next week with another recipe.